oil, analyzing why and how the price of oil changed between 2005 and 2015, by Lucas Stoller and Pablo Fernandez Gras. Oil addiction. Oil is perhaps the commodity of our times. We use it as energy to heat our homes and as fuel for transporting cars, planes, trucks, and trains. Furthermore, oil is an essential chemical feedstock, as all our plastic is made from oil. And did you know that much of the fertilizer we use in farming also comes from oil? Now we discuss how important it is, let us take a quick look at some of its owners. After World War II, many newly independent oil-rich nations found themselves having to compete with the Seven Sisters, the seven big Western oil companies. To avoid being pushed around, they united to make one fund known as OPEC, or the Organization of Petrol Exporting Countries. OPEC controls nearly half the oil mar world market share, and it uses its power to influence oil prices to its advantage, indirectly, by limiting or increasing supply depending on global demand. A good example of how OPEC employed these tactics was in the 1980s oil glut, when after economic crises in the late 1970s, global oil demand fell while supply stayed the same, which caused a drop in oil prices. To bring it back up again, Saudi Arabia and other OPEC members cut supply as shown in the graph. To better analyze the oil price in the last 10 years, we're going to split that period up into four different parts. Firstly, we'll look at the rise in price up until 2008, then at the crash in oil price until 2009. Thirdly, we'll examine the recovery of oil price until 2011. And finally, we'll discuss the drop in 2014 until the present moment. Part 8. The upwards trend can be explained by three factors. Firstly, the world saw serious economic growth, which meant that in our oil-dependent world economy, the demand also kept rising. Nevertheless, oil supply did not increase to meet demand, and in some places it actually fell, such as in the North Sea, the USA, and in Mexico. Thirdly, because prices kept rising, a bull market emerged, as speculators started to buy oil now for stockpiling and to sell later, when prices were higher. This in turn made oil even more scarce and demand increase, which caused a vicious circle in oil price increase. As concerns political aspects, it should be noted that the embargo on Iranian oil due to fears that it might be developing nuclear weapons meant that a traditionally strong oil supplier was out of the game, and hence supply was not as high as it could be. Part B. The collapse of Lehman Brothers and the ensuing world economic crisis meant that demand for oil fell because business and economic activity stagnated, and hence stockpile oil became superfluous for global demand. Those speculators who stockpile oil while the price had been rising started to sell like crazy, which once again resulted in the vicious bear market by which the dropping price encouraged more selling and the price dropped even more. Part C. Prices rebounded soon after they hit the rock bottom because while it was true that speculative demand for oil had plummeted, real demand had not dropped as much as speculators thought, and hence demand for oil returned to growing prices. Moreover, the beginning of economic recovery started a new path towards increasing oil demand. Part D. The second shock of the decade can be explained by the following factors. Firstly, the, the world saw a rise in unconventional oil supply sources, such as fracking. This is a process by which shale oil located in between rock formations in, is extracted by pumping water chemicals and sand at high pressure to break, the, to break the rock structures and extract the oil bubbles. This technique proliferated, proliferated in the USA until 2014, when OPEC and mainly Saudi Arabia decided to massively produce oil so as to bring the price down and eventually make fracking, which had a higher marginal price, unsustainable. Finally, from a political aspect, it must be noted that Saudi Arabia and Iran were fighting proxy wars to over control of the region, and Saudi Arabia, in an effort to outbuy Iran's uh, oil industry, lowered the prices drastically by oversupply. Okay, moving on to the past and the future of oil prices and its prediction. So, how would we predict? Well, first of all, we have to work with three data sets. The break-even data, the marginal cost, and the Brent oil prices. Now, the break-even point is the moment where both fixed costs as well as variable costs are met. The marginal cost is a point at which only the variable costs are met. So now let's introduce the main players. We have Saudi Arabia, we have Russia, and we have the USA. So Saudi Arabia is the number one producer. Recently, Saudi Arabia has lowered the oil prices per barrel by supplying much more to the oil market. The aim of this was to crush the American fracking industry. 
This low oil price does not worry Saudi Arabia on the short run because they have enough money on different bank accounts to survive for quite a while. However, it causes immense problems for Russia and the USA. Russia is the number two producer. The low oil prices are quite problematic for Russia since their economy is decreasing by up to 2% due to the low income. To slow down this economic deflation of Russia, the prices must at least be $60 per barrel. USA is the number three producer. The USA tried to become independent from the Middle East oil using a process called fracking. But what is fracking? Well, in simple terms, fracking is the process of pumping water, sand, and chemicals into the ground to push the crude oil out of it. Now, let's get to the predictions. The basis of our prediction is the assumption that the oil prices have to rise to a minimum of $60 and cannot exceed a maximum of $73. But why? Well, Currently, Saudi Arabia is fighting for America's dependence on Middle East oil. To do so, they have lowered the price. However, they did not consider that Russia might not be able to produce at this price. So with Russia out of the picture, the supply would decrease, so the price would increase, making fracking an, al uh, an alternative again. So now, after a bit of research, we found the following facts. Now, as we see, the marginal cost of USA oil is much higher than Saudi's or Russia's. But what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that at any price below $73, the USA cannot support its marginal cost. We already know that Russia needs an oil price of $60 or more. So we now got a range of possible prices between $60 and $73. But where in that range is our prediction? Additionally, we also analyzed the trends of marginal cost and the break-even cost of the, main eight, of the eight main producers in the oil industry to predict a standardized marginal and break-even cost for 2016. But what does standardized mean? Well, imagine all countries in the oil industry were to fill one barrel of oil, and that one barrel of oil would be sold for a certain price. Depending on the market strength, each country would contribute a different amount of oil, and hence each country would get a different amount of money. When standardizing the marginal or break-even cost, we are considering the market strength to find a fair average. Uh, if our predictions for 2016 using break-even and marginal cost are high, then our final prediction will lie at the upper part of the range. If it is low, our final prediction will lie at the lower part. So our main steps for finding the prediction. Well, first of all, find the marginal and break-even cost of the most influential countries in the oil industry. Then find the percentage influence. Last but not least, calculate the standardized marginal and break-even cost using the formula percentage influence times marginal or break-even cost. After finding the standardized values for marginal and break-even prices, we plotted them as a graph and extrapolated them using a well-fitting and logistically reasonable line of best fit. Those are the graphs. Now we find out the average difference of the standardized marginal price and the brand oil. We did this by subtracting one value from another, well, for each year, and then taking the average. This leads us to our final prediction. So now we add this average to the predicted production price for 2016 to get our final prediction according to the pure data analysis. So this would be 15.48 for the production plus 62.66 is equal to $78.14. So our final prediction. 
To get our final prediction, we plotted all the points onto a bar chart and drew a line of best fit through these points. We then plugged the middle value, which is 2.5, into the equation of our line of best fit, which ultimately, ultimately gave us the result of $69.41, though, ceteris paribus.